Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the program today, the Monday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. I had a great day yesterday being in a local church preaching the gospel and teaching the Word of God. I love doing that. And to that end, we are here today, and my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter in chapter 1. 2 Peter 1, if at all possible, get your Bible open there and join me. We have done some preliminary work thus far, but today we want to dive into to some opening verses here. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand I want to talk to you about. So with a couple of things to deal with today, get a piece of paper, get something on which you can jot some notes and something with which to write. That way, as we give our outline, you can jot that down. But when we give some contact information about how we can send you some free gospel tracts, you'll have that piece of paper handy as well. Well, let me begin this way. My wife and I have three children, two boys and a girl, and I think you realize they're all grown now. But when my boys were young, the cartoon version of G.I. Joe was very popular, and my boys loved the show. Well, one of the things I liked about the cartoon episodes is that they all ended with a moral story, a moral value being taught. And after the moral value was taught, the lead character in the cartoon tune would say these words, and now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Well, my friend, there's a great deal of truth in that little simple statement. You probably are very familiar with the phrase, knowledge is power, and again, that statement has truth in it. But of course, I hope you really do know the famous words of Jesus when he said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is real power in knowledge, but with the right kind of knowledge, other things come to us besides just power. And that's the focus here of our study in 2 Peter chapter 1. Get your Bible and join me there, please. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. And by a gospel tract, I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This tract is entitled Memorial Stones. Memorial Stones. And on the front face is a picture of what looks to be a military cemetery because all the headstones are just as straight in a row as they can possibly be. And the tract begins with these words, Daddy, please tell me about these stones. Well, son, the track goes on to say, these stones are loving memorials of departed loved ones. They mark the graves of moms and dads, brothers and sisters, grandmothers and grandfathers, neighbors and good friends. Some are in memory of soldiers who died to preserve our freedom. These stones speak of our love and respect for the ones buried there. But the track goes on to say this. They also speak of, and now here comes the points of the track. It points to the certainty of death. Death. It points to the suddenness of death. It points to the fact that death can come to the old and the young. And it points to the fact that we better be ready to face death. And then it goes on to say this, there is an empty tomb. And obviously Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again. And because of his empty tomb, we can know for a fact that he can conquer even our worst enemy, which is death. Oh, friend, here's a great gospel tool to help give to somebody who does not know Jesus as Savior and that they can have the clear, simple plan, God's plan of salvation. 
would you let me send you this track? Frankly, I want to send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known our contact information. Pick one of those. Give us your name and mailing address. We'll send that free sample packet to you in the next business day's mail. If you can't wait to the end, then just go visit our website, which is Bible. You know how to spell that. BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc.org. Let's you and I become partners in the gospel today. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says this, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We're going to stop right there. If you look at the end of verse 2, it ends with a comma, not a period. That obviously means that there's more to come in the flow of the opening thoughts here of Second Peter. I have a three-part outline for chapter 1 that I would use if I were preaching the whole chapter at one time. And if I were doing that, verses 1 through 4 would be the first section, and my title for that would be Salvation by Faith salvation by faith. And our salvation is based on three things that are found in these opening four verses. In verse one, we are saved through righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. Here in verse two, we are saved through knowledge about the Savior. And then in verse three, we are saved through God's power. But I want us to focus right now on just verse 2. Let me read verse 2 again. It says this, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. A friend, salvation is a gift. It's a gift of God's grace. You know Ephesians 2, 8, which says, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. We are not saved from our sin, our sin guiltiness by our own personal goodness or by our religiosity or our baptism or our our national heritage for that matter. All people in every era that were saved got saved due to God's grace. How was that? Well, simply put, someone gave us the knowledge of the gospel and we believed and we trusted in or we placed our faith in the knowledge that we learned about Jesus Christ. Now, we do not just believe in the information in our heads, of course. We put our eternal weight of destiny into the person of Jesus Christ. Somebody told us about the person, and we trust in the person. But verse 2 says that God desires us to grow in the knowledge about our Savior God. Verse 2 says that our as our knowledge grows, we're going to have two benefits come into our lives. We're going to gain in, first of all, grace, and we're going to gain in peace. We're going to gain in grace. We're going to gain in peace. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ as I am, then you already have received salvation grace. But friend, God has all kinds of other grace and grace gifts he wants to give to you. Now, for me personally, the best definition that I have found for grace is this. Grace is the gift of God, of his power and his desire to do his will. I'm going to say that again. Grace is the gift of God of his power and the gift of his desire, his want to, so that we can do his will. Now, it is God's will that people be saved, so God has grace that people be saved. But God has other things he desires us to do. He has other things he wants us to become after we're saved. He's going to give grace for each of those things as well. But verse 2 says that these various graces grow in us as we grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
That knowledge is found, obviously, in the Word of God. We're not waiting for angels to talk to us. We're not waiting for some dream to happen. God has given us his preserved eternal Word. It's without error. We can trust it. This knowledge about Christ is found in the Scriptures. But verse 2 also speaks of the benefit of peace. Now, the word peace simply refers to a quietness in our soul, a quietness in our soul. It means that we are at rest about the issues surrounding our life. If we were to turn over to Mark chapter 5, we would find the story of the woman who had that issue of blood, and Jesus healed her, and Jesus said these words unto her, daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole, go in, here it comes, go in peace, and be whole, that is, be free, be cured of thy plague. Oh, friend, for 12 years, this woman had fretted about her physical well-being. She had no peace in her soul concerning whether she was going to live or die. All the doctors she went to couldn't help her, and that in and of itself add more in intense anxiety to her life. But through Jesus' power, she was totally healed. She could be now at rest in her heart about her health. As she gained her knowledge about Christ, by his grace, he healed her, and rest came to her life. He wants to give us rest. Oh, my friend, that's how God wants us to be about our life issues. Whether those issues concern the money and situation of our life, our physical health, our wayward children, whatever it may be, God has grace and God has peace for each of his own. Now, verse 2 says that our grace and peace, that factor of grace and peace in our lives will be impacted by how much we grow in our knowledge of the person of Christ. I think, beloved, that this truth then, what we found here in verse 2, this truth makes our Bible, your Bible and my Bible, one of the most prized possessions in our lives. Have you read your Bible today? Let me ask a further question. Do you have a planned set time where you read your Bible every single day. Do you have a reading plan? You need a reading plan. Then let me ask this question. If you read your Bible today, do you remember what it was that you read? How many times have you and I read a portion of scripture, got done, pulled our eyes off the page and said inside of our head, what did I just read? I don't really remember. It tells us that our brain was somewhere else. Well, then let me ask this question. If you do remember what it was you read, what did you learn from your reading today? You see, we need to go to read our Bible, but with a plan to say, Father in heaven, may your indwelling, teaching Holy Spirit help me learn from the word of God today. If you struggle in how to have personal devotions, effective, self-feeding personal devotions, devotions from which you actually get something from and help your prayer life for that day. If you struggle with that, contact us. We know how to help people have effective learning personal times in the Word of God. Dear friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you're missing two things in your soul. God's grace to save you from your sin, God's peace to give you assurance that today he's your savior, you have a heavenly father, he's with you, he'll watch over you. When Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that becomes yours, but it's not until you receive Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, 
The word Tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him 